Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, due to, we'll call it reasons, there have been a number of new developers in the Godot ecosystem the last couple weeks, and most of them are comfortable using the C-sharp programming language. As a result, C-sharp programming in Godot has become a much bigger priority. Now you may notice when you go to grab Godot, it becomes apparent right away that C-sharp isn't flawless. For example, we go to download Godot, you'll notice you have a choice of downloads. You've got the Godot game engine, and then you've got the Godot game engine with the .NET support on top of it. This means that there is an aspect of cruft or size that is involved in supporting .NET with the way that Godot works right now. Don't worry, that is something that is definitely being worked on. Also, there are certainly limitations in working with C Sharp uh, with Godot, and some of them are actually probably deal breakers to some people. So here, for example, we are in the Godot Engine 4.1 documentation, and the thing I want to address to you is down here. Attention, projects written in C Sharp using Godot 4.1 X, so 4.1 at this point in time, currently cannot be exported to Android, iOS, and web platforms. To use C Sharp on those platforms, use Godot 3 instead. The other thing you probably want to notice here about Godot 3 versus Godot 4 is .NET support has been heavily modified between Godot 3 and 4. As such, you may run into issues or find spots where the documentation could be improved. So Godot 3 actually has better C Sharp support than Godot 4, especially when you're looking at uh, platform supported. And you may be wondering, why is this? There are a number of different programming languages out there that are implemented in Godot that work without these limitations, and you don't actually need special downloads to do them. You use something called GD extension. In fact, just literally yesterday, I did a video about Swift, the programming language being added to Godot, and it was added via uh, GD extensions. So yeah, that is the talk that's going on right now. So in the past, uh, you had the Godot API, so the underlying guts of Godot, and then you had something called GD native, the C, plus, the C API, and that's what the C++ layer spoke to. So did GD script. Uh, this was sort of the uh, way you talk to the underlying underpinnings of the Godot language. And then uh, the one downside to GD Native is everything had to be compiled into the engine. So you could extend it using modules, but you still had to build the engine from scratch from scratch at that point in time, which was kind of not ideal. Now, the way that they implemented C Sharp was using a mono glue mono runtime. This is basically a C++ to C Sharp translation layer. It's a bunch of C++ code that talked to mono, mono being the open source cross-platform implementation of the .NET framework. And this is how you implemented C Sharp. Well, the truth is this diagram, this is actually still true for Godot 4.x. You can't you're still using this glue layer to support C Sharp code uh, in Godot 4.1. And this porting from Godot 3 to Godot 4 is what caused Android and other platforms to not work with .NET right now. So what they're doing with Godot 4 is they've added something called GD extensions. Now this is a dynamic extension system for the Godot uh, engine that allows you to basically create extensions of all kinds. You could do uh, a physics system in it, you could do completely new uh, programming language, you could write GD script too, if you wished. And you're also going to find that a number of different programming languages have bindings this way. As I mentioned just yesterday, Swift was now added this way. You've got Rust, you've got Hacks, you've got Go, you've got D language, uh, you've got Python. Oddly enough, and this one is strange, and I, I think the lead developer on the project pointed this out, I don't think there's JavaScript bindings that use GD extension, which is weird, because in all honesty, I think JavaScript is still the most used, maybe not the most popular, but the most used programming language in the world. But this GD extension system is also the interface for C++, and it is going to be used for C Sharp. Now, this is going to have a number of advantages, but it's going to also take some time. So you may be wondering, okay, well, where do we stand? Because if you want to use C Sharp today, you obviously want to get Android support, iOS support, and web support, or at least one of those three platforms is probably important to you. And that's going to have to come with hacks to this or improvements to this runtime system. But going forward, they're going to switch it to GD extension and you're not going to have these issues. Plus the cool thing is you're also going to be able to extend Godot using C Sharp once this is in place. So they have a roadmap discussion in place. So the proposal aims to be a public technical discussion regarding the future of C Sharp in Godot. The idea is to get help from the community to reach implementation direction consensus. So if you want to have impact into how C Sharp is implemented in Godot going 
going forward. That is what this document is all about. Although, a bit of a spoiler alert, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be GD extensions in some way, shape, or form. There are still some question marks like how do we uh, hook the bindings together and that stuff. Uh, but there are definitely problems with the current system. So that glue layer I talked about earlier on, well, it requires a large amount of C++ uh, to glue the Godot and C-sharp runtimes together, makes it difficult to maintain and redundant with the new extension system. So you might be wondering, well, why the hell didn't they just use the GD extension system all along? Well, if you recall back, when we go back here, it didn't have it. So Godot 3 had GD native, not GD extension. So GD extension is a new extension system, which opened up a bunch of avenues and roads for what Godot can do. But at the point where C-sharp's language support was added to Godot, it simply wasn't an option. So now that it is there, uh, a lot of the C++ code being done to shim C-sharp support into Godot is redundant because it supplies the same functionality that the GD extension system does. Uh, many of the APIs exposed to C-sharp currently are lagging behind GD extension, what it provides. Again, this is a maintenance nightmare because you've got to maintain all of that code that was written there. And we go all the way back to where I started this video with. Remember how there's these two different downloads? Well, yeah, that factors into this last point. It makes it harder to have a single version of Godot because the large amount of glue code encourages users to switch it off when not needed to save space, etc. So the enhancement, how it would help to overcome the problem. I'm not going to go through this entire document, by the way. It is quite large. But if you're interested in this topic, you should jump in here and get some of the implementation details. So the proposed solution is to move C-sharp support to the new extension system. I, I, I honestly think that we're past proposal at this point. That is what is going to happen. No other solution makes sense. There's no reason to support an old mechanism for extensions when you've got a newer, cleaner, and more elegant version of it. Uh, so this will give C-sharp uh, in Godot effective first-class support at the same level as C++, and it will bring the following features in. The entirety of the C-sharp glue layer, currently done via C++.NET hosting API, will be majorly re replaced by the GD extension system using the extension interface common to all binding languages, so again, Godot CPP, but also Rust, Hacks, Swift, etc. Uh, the module slash mono folder will be removed from the code base and likely replaced by only a tiny bootstrapper to load the .NET runtime on demand if installed in the project. Uh, because the entirety of C-sharp support will use the shared extension system of GD extensions, a single unified version of Godot in the export templates will be possible. So then you just go and you download Godot. And if you have .NET installed on your machine, you can use .NET as a language. And some of the C-sharp APIs, including the native, .NET, uh, the native Godot collections, will be changed for more efficiency. So there are a couple of uh, ugly areas where if you're working with um, C-sharp code now, it's a little a little hacky, it's, it's not as native and nice as you'd like it to be, uh, and this is going to improve with the new implementation as well. So basically, it turns C-sharp into a bit of a more first-class implementation, which is, again, a nice thing. So go through the rest of this, it, it's, a lot of it is like how this will actually work, uh, how the various different systems work right now. Uh, so going forward, so you do have some issues with how code is generated. You do have to jump into another editor to edit your C-sharp code. This isn't really that different from uh, Unity or Unreal Engine. It's pretty much the standard way of doing things. And I got to imagine, in all honesty, 90% of people do coding for like a language like C-sharp in uh, a dedicated IDE of some kind. I bet you it's even more, more common that GD script developers are working in something like Visual Studio Code at this point in time. So it's probably not a huge deal that you have this jump out to the IDE part in there, but theoretically going forward, you would be able to have an editor directly uh, working in the system. They got a couple of different uh, options available. They do have to still deal with the bindings interface, so this is going to be a change going forward. Also, mapping the Godot types, something that is a little bit more elegant to the C-sharp world will come of this. And yeah, and then the rest of this is open to discussion. If you are interested at all in the future of C-sharp, especially if this is important important to you, uh, you may want to participate in this particular discussion. Uh, so you got some interesting things here. For example, this guy wants to use C-sharp heavily to modify Godot itself. Uh, extensions workflow would basically make this possible, uh, improvements there. And then they've also got an internal .NET contributors meeting uh, and some of the things that they discussed. And here, some summary from that is, it's a good way to move forward. You decouple the C-sharp support from the core. If anything is missing in GD extension, it will be missing for other languages too. So instead of improving just the bindings, you improve the GD extension system for all languages languages if you make it all one interface. Uh, they need to drop the entire interop code and rewrite it from scratch. So obviously this is going to take a bit of time. Uh, so if any uh, modules use a number of APIs which may not be exposed to GD extensions yet, C-sharp extensions would uh, not be not 
would not need it to be reloaded and it would be able to reload C sharp assemblies just like the module does currently. I'm a little confused by the wording there. But the one thing that they are talking about here if they move to the GD extension system is it should allow good soft reload of C sharp code. So if you want to test whether they're doing a full compile cycle, you should be able to. Uh, and the performance needs actually need to be assessed to see if this actually makes things faster. Another thing that you want to note, and it's actually mentioned here in the document, uh, the current system is still going to get uh, improved. So they are going to continue uh, working on it going forward uh, to get those other platforms supported. So even if you are working with the whole old GD native uh, interop system for C Sharp, they are going to implement uh, Android and iOS support, etc., cetera, uh, using the existing system as kind of a side project to this going forward. So this is the future of how Godot is going to be worked with, but those platform limitations, those things we talked about right here, these things, uh, these are still being worked on. And in Godot 4. Point, maybe. 4.2, hopefully, uh, we will have a fix there using the current system in place. And then uh, this GD extension based system will be the future of how C Sharp is implemented in the Godot engine. Let me know what you think in comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.